You wake up, your heart beating fast. You just had a scary dream and you can remember every detail. But what about the good dreams? The ones where you were having fun or doing amazing things? Why can't you remember those? It seems unfair that our brains hold on to the scary stuff and let the good stuff fade away. Today, we're going to figure out why this happens. We'll look at how our brains work and why they might have developed this habit over time. Understanding this might help us make sense of our dreams and why we remember some more than others. 1. The Amygdala Alarm System At the heart of our tendency to remember scary dreams lies a small, almond-shaped structure in our brain called the amygdala. This powerhouse of emotion is particularly attuned to fear and threat, acting as our internal alarm system. When we experience something frightening in a dream, the amygdala kicks into high gear, flooding our system with stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. This surge of hormones doesn't just wake us up, it also enhances memory formation. It's like our brain is saying, hey, this is important, we need to remember this for survival. As a result, the scary dream gets etched more deeply into our memory than other, less emotionally charged dreams. The amygdala's influence doesn't stop when we wake up. It continues to process the emotional content of the dream, reinforcing the memory and making it more likely to stick around. This is why you might find yourself replaying a nightmare throughout the day, while pleasant dreams fade away almost instantly. 2. The Evolutionary Advantage Our tendency to remember scary dreams isn't just a quirk of brain chemistry, it's a product of evolution. Our ancestors faced numerous threats in their environment, from predators to natural disasters. Those who were better at remembering and learning from dangerous situations were more likely to survive and pass on their genes. Dreams, in this context, can be seen as a kind of mental rehearsal for real-life threats. By vividly remembering the scary scenarios we encounter in our dreams, we're better prepared to face similar situations in waking life. It's like our brain is running simulations, helping us practice our fear responses in a safe environment. This evolutionary advantage explains why even in our modern, relatively safe world, our brains still prioritize scary dreams. Our threat detection system doesn't know that we're no longer facing daily survival challenges. It's still working overtime to keep us alert and prepared for danger, even if that danger now takes the form of public speaking or social embarrassment rather than a saber-toothed tiger. 3. The Negativity Bias Humans have a well-documented negativity bias, meaning we tend to pay more attention to and remember negative experiences more than positive ones. This bias extends to our dreams, making scary or unsettling dreams more memorable than pleasant or neutral ones. From a psychological perspective, this negativity bias serves a purpose. By focusing on potential threats or problems, we're better equipped to avoid them in the future. In the context of dreams, remembering the scary ones might help us process and prepare for real-life anxieties or fears. However, this bias can skew our perception of our dream life. We might believe we have more nightmares than we actually do, simply because we remember them more vividly. In reality, studies show that most dreams are relatively neutral in emotional tone, but our brains are wired to latch on to the scary ones. 4. The REM rebound effect most of our vivid dreaming occurs during the rapid eye movement, REM, stage of sleep. Interestingly, when we're woken up during REM sleep, which is more likely to happen during a nightmare due to its emotional intensity, we experience what's called the REM rebound effect. This effect means that in subsequent nights, our brains will try to make up for the interrupted REM sleep by increasing the duration and intensity of REM periods. As a result, we might experience more vivid and emotionally charged dreams, including more nightmares, in the nights following a scary dream that woke us up. The REM rebound effect can create a kind of self-fulfilling prophecy. We remember a scary dream, which makes us more anxious about sleeping, potentially leading to more sleep disturbances and more vivid dreams. This cycle can reinforce our perception that we're having more nightmares than usual. Five. 
the narrative coherence factor. Scary dreams often have a more coherent narrative structure compared to other types of dreams. They typically involve a clear threat or conflict, which gives the dream a beginning, middle, and end. This narrative coherence makes scary dreams easier to remember and recount. In contrast, many of our non-scary dreams can be fragmented, abstract, or lacking a clear storyline. Without a strong narrative thread, these dreams are harder for our waking minds to grasp and retain. It's like trying to remember a movie with a clear plot versus a series of disconnected, surreal images. The narrative structure of scary dreams also makes them more likely to be shared with others. We're more inclined to tell someone about a vivid nightmare than a pleasant but vague dream about floating in space. This sharing further reinforces the memory of the scary dream while other dreams fade away unremarked. Six, the wake-up factor. Scary dreams are more likely to wake us up abruptly, often in the middle of the REM sleep stage. This sudden awakening can catch our brains off guard, creating a snapshot of the dream that's more easily transferred to our waking memory. When we wake up naturally at the end of a sleep cycle, we've often cycled through several stages of sleep since our last REM period. This means that any dreams we had earlier in the night have had time to fade from our short-term memory. The scary dream that jolts us awake, on the other hand, is fresh and immediate. Additionally, the act of waking up during a dream allows us to immediately process and think about what we've experienced. This conscious reflection helps to solidify the dream in our memory, making it more likely that we'll remember it later in the day or even years down the line. Seven. The Emotional Processing Theory Some researchers believe that dreams, particularly emotionally charged ones, play a crucial role in processing and integrating our daily experiences and emotions. According to this theory, scary dreams might be our brain's way of working through unresolved fears or anxieties. By presenting these fears in a dream format, our brain allows us to confront and process them in a safe environment the vivid recall of these dreams might be a sign that this emotional processing is incomplete, prompting us to continue working through these feelings in our waking life. This theory suggests that remembering scary dreams isn't necessarily a bad thing. It could be a sign that our brain is actively working to help us deal with challenging emotions or experiences, even if the process feels unsettling in the moment. 8. The Sleep Stage Timing the timing of our sleep stages can influence which dreams we remember. We tend to have longer periods of REM sleep in the latter part of our night's sleep, and dreams from these later REM periods are more likely to be remembered. If a scary dream occurs during one of these later REM periods, it's more likely to be remembered simply because it's closer to our waking time. This proximity to waking makes it easier for the dream content to be transferred from our short-term to long-term memory. This timing factor can create a skewed perception of our dream life. We might think we're having more nightmares than we actually are, simply because the scary dreams that occur in the early morning are more easily remembered than the neutral or positive dreams from earlier in the night. 9. The Lucid Dreaming Connection Interestingly, scary dreams can sometimes trigger lucid dreaming, a state where the dreamer becomes aware that they're dreaming. This awareness can make the dream even more memorable, as the dreamer is actively engaging with and observing the dream content. Lucid dreaming during a nightmare can be a powerful experience. The dreamer might try to change the course of the dream or confront the source of fear directly. These active attempts to control or influence the dream make it more likely to be remembered upon waking. Some people even practice techniques to induce lucid dreaming as a way to deal with recurring nightmares. By becoming aware within the dream, they hope to gain control over the scary elements and reduce their fear. This intentional engagement with the dream content further cements it in memory. 10. The cultural and personal significance. Finally, the dreams we remember, including scary ones, are often influenced by our cultural background and personal experiences. Dreams that align with culturally significant themes or personal fears 
are more likely to stick in our memory. For example, in a culture that places great emphasis on academic success, dreams about failing exams might be particularly memorable. Similarly, someone with a fear of public speaking might vividly remember dreams where they're embarrassed in front of a crowd. This personal and cultural resonance adds an extra layer of emotional significance to certain dreams, making them more likely to be remembered and dwelled upon. It's a reminder that our dream recall isn't just about brain chemistry or evolutionary biology. It's also deeply intertwined with our individual and collective psyche. Understanding why we tend to remember scary dreams more than others can help us put these experiences in perspective. It's not that we're only having nightmares, it's that our brains are wired to pay special attention to potentially threatening scenarios, even in our sleep. By recognizing this, we can appreciate the complex interplay between our dreaming and waking minds, and perhaps even use our memorable dreams as tools for self-reflection and personal growth. If you have made it this far, let us know what you think in the comment section below. For more interesting topics, make sure you watch the recommended video that you see on the screen right now. Thanks for watching.